So uh, welcome everyone to this uh, MA Taiwan Studies uh, taster session. Uh, we have um, three speakers and we also have a, a current um, uh, student and a former student who can also comment on um, what it's like taking uh, Taiwan Studies um, modules and uh, degrees at, uh, at SOAS. Um, our first speaker is Dr. Dombi Yu, who's going to uh, be talking about her experience of teaching Taiwan through the angle of why Taiwan matters. Uh, Dr. Zhang has been teaching at SOAS for uh, a long time, going back into the um, uh, something like uh, 15 uh, years. Um, and she teaches a couple of courses on culture and society and Taiwan's international uh, relations. Um, I'll, I'll be coming in after um, uh, Dr. Zhang and I'll be uh, looking at the topic of why Taiwan matters from the perspective of comparative politics. Because I, I, so as I teach a couple of um, um, courses that look at Taiwan uh, domestic politics and also Taiwan um, in a comparative perspective compared to um, South Korea and, uh, and Japan. Um, and then our third speaker will be uh, Max Lenke uh, So, who is um, a former undergraduate and postgraduate student at SOAS. So now he works uh, at SOAS at the Center of Taiwan Studies um, uh, with us. Um, and he's taken a number of our modules um, and he's particularly specializing in history. So uh, I think he may um, look at this topic from a historical perspective. So for now, let me hand over to my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Zhang. Over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share the screen, then I'll start uh, the presentation. Thank you. Can everyone see it? Great. Okay. So uh, welcome to our session. Um, my name is uh, Zhang Biyu. I'm the convener of two Taiwan uh, studies modules. Uh, how do I switch to the next? If you hover your mouse over the screen, you should see a little arrow in the bottom left corner of the screen. Can you see it? Or if you click on the screen and then press the arrow to the mm, screen. Yes, yes. <laughs> My apologies, yes. Okay, so um, as you can see, there are two uh, modules uh, I'm teaching uh, at the moment. Uh, in the first half of my uh, session, uh, my part of the session, I will explore the issue of why Taiwan matters and why Taiwan is such a fantastic case studies in international relations. In the second half, I will give you a, a taste. What this, after all, this is a taster session. I'll give you a taste about uh, how we look at uh, identity construction case uh, in Taiwan through a, a nation building project very, very quickly. So both modules, so the first one is about why Taiwan matters. The second one is giving you a, a case study about how you can make use of uh, uh, this particular modules. Okay, the, the former really examining how uh, Taiwan connect with the outside world and how important is the politics of recognition. While the latter, the second one, uh, traces the trajectory of Taiwanese identity through its uh, great social and the cultural transformation. Okay. Okay. Why Taiwan matters. Okay. This is something we're always trying to uh, uh, tell our students. First, let's think about this fundamental question. Why Taiwan matters? Um, if we look at this uh, question from a an international perspective. Taiwan's um, development are closely linked with Chinese movement in this region and also US Asian Pacific strategy. So Taiwan's international space and it's, uh, you know, this kind of real, uh, its relationship with the world are also tightly intertwined with the relationship with China. So this, this course usually, um, when we offer this, this course usually is to do with uh, not just about Taiwan's international relations, but also cross strait relations. Uh, so on the one hand, Taiwan's international relations and activities really depend on the temperature 
of cross-strait relations. On the other hand, um, really, if we see a very active Taiwan in international arena and a friendly Taiwan-US relations, this will definitely aggravate China. So this development uh, usually triggered uh, this kind of co covert, coercive uh, diplomacy and even military uh, threat. So here are several reasons why uh, I think it is important in terms of uh, international relations. Okay, first, uh, in international law, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan study, uh, sorry, Taiwan status is very ambiguous. Despite its diplomatic isolation, Taiwan has become an economic powerhouse uh, with a full and mature democracy and one of the world's top uh, uh, producers of uh, computer technology. Although its political and economic uh, transformation have caught the attention of the world, its lack of the fact uh, the uh, jury recognition has deepened Taiwan's international isolation. This kind of international uh, standing really being damaged and its long-term uh, exclusion from the international uh, community has uh, also dampened uh, Taiwanese mentality. So this kind of national psyche uh, uh, wishing to be recognized is something very special and unique. So in the study of contested statehood, Taiwan's case is considered the world's most unique one and has been ingenious in developing an elaborate network of reciprocal semi-formal this kind of representation uh, representative uh, against uh, isolation. So this is something quite unusual if you look at um, contested states. Okay, next. Uh, another reason for studying Taiwan is really about its strangely powerful uh, 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 place in the world politics. Because of its historical relations uh, with the US, Taiwan is said to hold a salient position in the US, China, and Taiwan Triangle. Whatever Taiwan does, it has the potential of triggering military conflicts um, in Taiwan Strait and impacting on the regional security and risking dragging the US and Japan into a war they don't want to fight. Therefore, Taiwan's international position has been described, as you can see here, as the tail wags two dogs. Moreover, the Taiwan issue has always been Chinese uh, um, core interest. Okay, we can see how important it is uh, from a conversation between Xi Jinping and uh, Donald Trump during the, uh, their 2017 uh, uh, summit in Beijing, Xi Jinping explained to uh, Trump that, I quote, uh, the Taiwan issue is the most important, most sensitive core in issue in China-US relations and concerns the political basis of China-US relationship. So you can see Actually, this is something, although it's a, a small in size, its influence is much greater than its obvious uh, uh, geographical or uh, physical size. Okay, then the next, if we think about why Taiwan matters, then we need to think about its importance in the uh, uh, regional security. The China factor looms large in Taiwan's foreign policy and diplomatic relations. For Taiwan, its international relations are inevitably impacted uh, by its uh, cross-strait relations. Moreover, the cross-strait tension has intensified since Taiwan's democratization. Paradoxically, the economic integration and cooperation have also deepened since then. So this, this kind of paradoxical relations have um, complicated across stray uh, relations and also in the regional uh, security. 
the next. I think uh, we should also remember because of Taiwan's uh, uh, isolation, it's to su supplement this kind of shrinking international space and the presence to boost its uh, uh, global standing. Taiwan became uh, almost like a pioneer in developing its uh, informal ties. So for example, there are at the uh, current situation, there are only 14 UN uh, countries and the Holy See that formally recognize uh, the ROC on Taiwan. However, with very few formal uh, diplomatic allies, Taiwan still manages to trade with the world and also interact with the majority UN members. Moreover, the ROC passport uh, actually performed very well. If we look at the 2021 Hanley Passport Index, Taiwan's ranks is number 32 out of 199 countries. So that means that Taiwanese uh, passport holders can travel the world um, uh, into the world 400, sorry, 145 countries in the world without a prior visa. In contrast, uh, the PRC a passport holder uh, ranked 70. They could only travel half as many countries. That's 75 uh, countries uh, around the world without prior uh, a visa. So in many ways, Taiwan's track to diplomacy is very powerful, interesting, and also quite creative. Okay. Lastly, um, this is, uh, I was appeal to all the SOAS students as an institution. I think we have always are very proud to provide students with non-mainstream alternative and decolonized perspectives. In the Western academic environment, Beijing's view on Taiwan is often widely discussed and also disseminated uh, either through official statements, uh, academic work, or in courses about China in most universities. So this course as SOAS uh, allows you uh, this kind of alternative viewpoints and provides you with very different ways of seeing. Hopefully it gives you an edge to your intellectual investigation and offers you a much fuller picture about Asia, about China, and about international politics. So I know I, I have a very a short time to go. So I will go through this very quickly. Okay, the, the next one is a, a, a topic we will typically discuss in our course uh, in the culture and society of Taiwan. This is a simple ex example about how a landscape was transformed into a national symbol and identity emblem. So we will quickly go through this and you can see um, this is uh, how Taiwanese construct a national symbol of Yushan. That's a J mountain um, or sometimes called uh, Mount Morrison. Okay. It's the highest mountain in not only in Taiwan but also in East Asia. So although the Yushan National Park was established in 19. 85, um, the promotion of Yushan as a national symbol only started very late in the 21st century. Since 2001, Yushan has been promoted by the Taiwanese government as Taiwan's sacred mountain, Shengshan. It was described in many promotional leaflets and uh, literature as the father of all Taiwanese and and the local people's spiritual uh, uh, mountain and homeland. Therefore, climbing Yushan is then interpreted as a sacred pilgrimage uh, and a journey embodying uh, Taiwanese spirit. So you can see here, there are plenty of uh, products or, or uh, uh, publications or um, uh, creations about Yushan and uh, themed around Yushan. Since the promotion was launched in 2001, a term Yushan Xue or the, uh, you know, the study of Yushan or Yushan discourse was coined to construct a nationalist uh, uh, discourse 
and to lend support to the growing Taiwan independent movement at the time. Okay, but although the, the fervor has subsided, but this idea about Yushan uh, representing Taiwan uh, has never really subsided. Pledges such as affection for Yushan and therefore uh, uh, by extension love for Taiwan have been made in the mass media extensively. Within only a few years, Yushan seemed to have uh, you know, secured a sacred status as the national symbol. So in 2006, it was voted by the Taiwanese public to be one of the most iconic image to represent the island. Okay, so you can see now, uh, you can climb the mountain, you can get a certificate. Okay, during the climbing seasons, crowds gather on the summit and declaring love for Taiwan and celebrating their qualification as children of Taiwan. Okay, and Yushan, of course. So let's see, this is the last stage. Oh, okay. Uh, so in all fairness, the com campaign has promoted a better understanding of, about Yushan and also about the island. So it's nothing wrong about loving your, your, your own landscape and uh, having more uh, better understanding about the island. However, neither environmental issues or the indigenous issues have been addressed in the construction of this particular national landscape. So in this progress, um, sorry, in this process, Yushan Xue campaign uh, has invented a modern myth to, uh, to resist political claim across the strait. So even today, the image of Yushan represents something quite different, uh, something quite dear to the Taiwanese. It's still a symbolic national image. Um, in this module, now I'm coming back to this, we will explore many aspects of Taiwanese culture and, and, and the social uh, issues from language usage and identity conflicts, uh, education and uh, um, ideological construction to globalization and digital Taiwan. So there are plenty of aspects in that uh, uh, module as well. I'll stop here and thank you for giving me the time. Thank you. How do I stop? Yes, stop share. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, uh, thanks for you. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, modules I'm involved in. I should also say that, um, like uh, my colleague uh, Max, I'm also a SOAS uh, graduate. Um, so I can also comment on what it's like to be a SOAS student. I think both as a SOAS student and as a SOAS academic, one of the amazing things about SOAS is that we can actually study uh, degrees and modules that you can't do in any other country um, uh, university in the world. Um, and the way that we teach Taiwan, I think is one example um, uh, of this because um, um, we have more modules on Taiwan than any other um, our university. So, of course, we hope that you will consider taking our MA in Taiwan studies, but also if you are taking uh, other postgraduate degrees at SOAS, it's also possible to take uh, any of our uh, Taiwan studies um, uh, modules. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to talk about this topic about why Taiwan matters from the perspective of uh, comparative uh, politics. I teach um, two postgraduate uh, modules that are heavily focused on Taiwan um, at SOAS. At election, social movements and gender in Taiwan and comparing democracies in, um, in Northeast uh, Asia. And, um, and what I'm gonna try and do is talk about some of the, uh, the ways that um, uh, the Taiwan is relevant in the study of comparative uh, politics, particularly in terms uh, of being a very valuable case study, something that, that, BU, uh, that Dr. Zhang uh, touched upon um, in her um, opening talk. So let me then start with the theme of electoral and party um, uh, politics. Now, why is Taiwan such a great place 
to uh, look at these uh, topics. Well, with um, Taiwan's now been a democracy for um, over three uh, decades. This means we have a, a, a large amount of electoral uh, data. Um, and Taiwan in many ways is a really um, easy place to study when it comes to electoral politics because of the ease of getting the critical data that we need for uh, studying um, electoral politics. For example, um, because of the uh, ease of internet data, we can get political communication uh, data. For example, we can find election ads uh, on YouTube or on the party's uh, websites. We also can easily get survey data um, on changing public opinion. Both academic and uh, media sources are extremely uh, user-friendly. And lastly, um, we can get the electoral voting data. So that means that um, uh, even at a distance, we can do really good quality electoral studies uh, research. We can engage with key debates uh, such as, do campaigns matter? And how do we actually explain electoral campaign uh, outcomes? And, and um, in this uh, module, we will look at a rake, what makes good and bad uh, political uh, communication. And I think this topic of electoral politics also has an important practical side because so many of our students will go on to be involved in uh, political communication, electoral campaigning after they graduate from SOAS. So there's a lot we can learn practically from this topic. Uh, a second um, 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 sub-theme is party politics. And, and again, Taiwan is a really interesting case to look at because of the stability of Taiwan's uh, party politics. The same two political parties have dominated Taiwan's politics um, for over three decades. And this makes Taiwan quite different from a lot of new democracies. Um, and because so much of the electoral and party politics um, literature and frameworks come out of European or North American experience, so there we have the chance to try and test, do these theories work in an, in an Asian uh, democracy. So for example, uh, for my um, um, newest book, I look at the question of Taiwan's Green Parties. So that enables me to engage with a international literature on small and movement parties. Do those theories work for uh, Taiwan's um, uh, Green Party? The second big theme that I look at in, um, in this uh, module is that of social movements. I think it's one of the topics that students find particularly interesting. Um, um, partly because Taiwan's social movements have been relatively successful. Um, so we'll look at a range of social movement case studies. And this again allows us to engage with big um, um, theoretical questions. For example, how do we measure the impact of social movements? How do we understand success and failure? How do we explain uh, success and failure of uh, social movements. So one of the one um, um, key kind of case study that we often look at is the sunflower movement, in which we have a student-led occupation of Taiwan's parliament for three weeks, and this is actually able to change uh, China-Taiwan relations. It's able to have a um, successful impact um, in in a way that the main opposition party wasn't. So how do we explain this kind of uh, success? Should we focus more on political opportunity structure? Should we look at alliances? So these are some of the, um, uh, the big questions that we look at when we look at Taiwanese uh, social movements. The third big theme that we look at on this module is that of gender politics. And again, I think Taiwan is a really fascinating uh, case study for a number of reasons. Uh, Taiwan generally is regarded as a relatively gender equal country. And it's also um, one of the countries with the highest level of female political representation. Um, why is that? How do you explain uh, the difference between Taiwan and let's say South Korea and Japan? Uh, and furthermore, does this high level of political uh, uh, female representation really matter uh, for gender equality? Do we see a causal relationship? 
And again, this allows us to engage with international debates on gender uh, politics. Another key uh, case study to look at is same-sex marriage. Why was Taiwan the uh, first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage? Uh, what kind of um, theories can we use? And what challenges does Taiwan still have when it comes to um, uh, gender equality? So that gives you a, a sense of some of the, um, the themes and case studies that we look at on the um, elections, social movements and gender of Taiwan um, courts, which is one of the core modules on MA Taiwan studies. I, I'm not gonna go into the same depth on the uh, comparing democracies module, but I'm just gonna just mention um, some of the um, uh, things that I think are particularly interesting in this kind of approach. So this module also looks at uh, a range of comparative politics and comparative sociology uh, themes. But the difference is that we look at three countries together, South Korea, Taiwan, and, uh, and Japan. This means we can't go into the same kind of depth uh, as we do in the, uh, the Taiwan uh, politics class. But I think there's advantages to doing this kind of comparative analysis. Uh, this also allows us to test theories, but we can do um, a two case or three case comparison. So we can look at a number of similar topics such as political corruption. Can we see a relationship between uh, democracy and political corruption? Um, why do we see high levels of political corruption in the South Korean case compared to, uh, to Taiwan? Uh, so again, by looking at these countries comparatively, we can again engage with a range of comparative politics, um, uh, theories and, uh, and frameworks. Um, and I look forward to um, uh, your questions and hopefully to uh, teaching you at, uh, at SOAS. So now let me now um, hand over to um, um, my former student and colleague, um, uh, Max. Thank you, David. Go ahead. Um, so, yes, as has uh, been covered by both Stephen and BU, I was a student uh, at SOAS taking the vast majority of the Taiwan Studies courses. And so to address the question of why Taiwan matters, I thought the best approach I could do was to share with you all, with you all my student experience with Taiwan Studies and also my personal experience with Taiwan itself. So to give you a bit of a sense of my background, um, I'm a history major and I primarily focused on diaspora histories and the manipulation of identity, then moving on to Republican Chinese history from the 1920s onwards. My first interaction with Taiwan at, um, and Taiwanese history itself was to take my first year undergraduate course. Um, it was a half course in indigenous history, looking the a legacy in the development of Taiwan's Austronesian indigenous peoples. And what I quickly discovered is that uh, for, from taking this, this first step, this small step into Taiwanese history and culture and so on, is that you'll discover that Taiwan really possesses a strength beyond size that is quite rare to see on the international stage. And just to give some points of example, by taking uh, David's course on Taiwanese politics and BU's course on Taiwanese society and history, you'll find that an understanding of Taiwan really unlocks more nuanced and refined comparative analyses across disciplines. So for example, an understanding of Taiwan cultural dynamics and history with China really helps break down these quite toxic narratives of civilization states, great power binaries, and particularly the sense of cultural essentialization. And another thing we see as uh, BU covered with uh, mention of Taiwan's question statehood or contested statehood, Looking at Taiwan and how well it functions, despite this exclusion on the international stage, really helped raise important questions on prescribed notions of statehood and what makes a national community, with the passport example as a key case. And then going to my personal experience, um, again, as I mentioned, looking at these questions of identity and manipulation, I realized when I, when I was, after going to Taiwan, coming back, doing these MA courses in society, law, history, and so on, you quickly realize that 
Taiwan is quite a special case in the sense that it's preserved so much Chinese history, culture, norms, and so on, but all at the same time is more than its Chineseness. And what I've found just by observing in Taiwan, studying in Taiwan, is that the real beauty of Taiwan is its diversity. And it is at the same, and it is uh, with this, it is the only society in the Sinosphere. And what I mean by that is countries and places that have been significantly influenced by the Chinese cultural world, which is actively seeking to decolonize society rather than reappropriate or harness colonial legacies as in the PRC or in Singapore. And when you go a bit deeper beyond Taiwan studies and look into you know, the lived life world of Taiwan, you'll realize that it is still the center of so much, both regionally and internationally. Still, Taiwan is the, the vast, um, holds the vast majority of Chinese language music. And that's across multiple Chinese languages, whether that be Hokkien, Hakao, or Mandarin itself. It is so often the place that coordinates different social movements and interaction between environmentalism, labor rights, labor unions, and so on. And at the same, and um, as I said before, it is a place that really fills this unique role on the global stage of introducing Chinese-ness and Chinese culture to audiences rather than prescribing as so many other places do. So yes, um, as I said, I'd keep it brief. And um, if you have any other questions about my experience and student um, time at SOAS, yeah, we perhaps we can cover it in the q and I suppose the last thing to say is that, yeah, from all this, this is why Taiwan matters. And it's why that the center of Taiwan studies at SOAS matters for Taiwan studies as well. Thank you. Fantastic, thanks, um, uh, Max. So I think what we should now do then is um, uh, we open up to uh, questions. And, um, and so that means we, we have two former SOAS students and, and a current one. Um, um, so we can, I think we should be able to come at your question from a range of, of angles. Um, so yeah, um, can they, they can only use chat, is that right? They can't. Um, yeah, okay. so you would be able to unmute yourself if you're listening in or to use the chat. So what you need to do is click on the little Q&A bar at the bottom of the screen. And once you submit that, each of the panelists will be able to see and we can type a response and we can also answer them live. All right, so we have one question um, that's coming from Catherine. I don't know if um, somebody wants to perhaps answer that one um, live. Um, and it's a question about the open modules that are available um, as part of the course. Duffy? Um, okay, um, so, so, so Catherine, do you mean that um, um, Okay, um, so I think coming up for this uh, next year, all of the Taiwan modules will be um, uh, will be running. Um, um, so if you're on another degree, they will be uh, they will be available. Um, so all the uh, the Taiwan modules are um, are open. So coming up for the uh, next year, we'll have the Taiwan film class. Uh, we'll have uh, elections. Uh, social movement agenda, we'll have Taiwan cross strait relations and international relations, we'll have culture and society in Taiwan, uh, and we'll have, yeah, and the um, uh, comparing democracy. So all of those will be um, uh, running. The, the module that Max mentioned was a, um, a year one undergrad um, um, uh, kind of um, um, semi-formal class, I should say. Um, so I don't think that um, um, that wouldn't be available for um, a, a postgraduate student. The other thing I would say is that 
Um, one of the amazing things about studying Taiwan SOAS is that um, we have so many um, module related events. Um, in a normal year, we run something like 50 to 60, even sometimes even 70 uh, Taiwan studies events, uh, which are meant to supplement the, uh, the modules. Um, so for example, we run the, uh, the summer school that normally runs in late June, early July. Um, uh, so if any of you want to get a sense of what it's like being a SOAS student, um, uh, keep an eye on the Center of Taiwan Studies events page. Um, come and join some of the events. Um, I know that online events are not quite the same as in-person uh, events, but I think you could still get a, a, um, a, a, um, an early sense of this. In fact, we have just this uh, week, we have events on um, tomorrow afternoon and also on Friday afternoon. Um, and um, um, I think that would be a, a great way to get a feel of that connection between um, uh, academic events and the, uh, and the modules. For example, tomorrow we have a, a, a session on uh, the China impact on, uh, on Taiwan. Um, well, uh, on Friday, we have a session on uh, movement uh, parties. So um, in a kind, of a, a kind of a long way, I'm not sure whether I, uh, uh, I answered that, but feel free to kind of follow up. I think perhaps um, B, you could expand a bit on the culture and society module to, to give um, Catherine a bit of a, a taste or a sense of uh, some of the more specific things we cover in the course. Well, thanks. Um, thanks, Catherine. Um, I think based on your question, it seems that you are more interested in uh, indigenous focused um, topics. I have to say because uh, there's, that's very specific, uh, but I think in our course, in culture and society course, you can have some sort of um, emphasis on it. And uh, but I can't guarantee you because we can only offer a certain kind of more general uh, 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 course to students. So uh, that will be part of the. Uh, um, syllabus it won't be uh, the main focus i'm sorry if it's not what you're looking for but i will advise you to if you are uh, coming to SOAS, i think you should at least have a go at us uh, because i think we cannot separate indigenous uh, issues uh, from overall uh, social issues so the best way of approaching indigenous uh, uh, topics is to understand a, a greater context. So um, of course, it's up to you. Yeah, let me um, just follow up. Um, um, I think the other thing to mention is that one of the amazing things about the SOAS master is the dissertation. Um, and, um, and I think that we can come at um, uh, topics such as gender or indigenous studies from a range of, of disciplinary angles. I think a lot of people will um, uh, engage on that uh, in their uh, assignments or in their dissertation. So for example, um, uh, you could look at something like indigenous voting behavior in an elections uh, topic, um, um, or um, indigenous issues in Taiwan's international relations. Um, and, and, and also we've had students who've looked at indigenous issues comparatively. For example, one of my students did a dissertation that looked at indigenous um, rights in Japan and Taiwan comparatively. I can see we've got another question uh, from uh, Miranda. Okay, do you think there's a link between the fact that Taiwan is one of the most gender equal societies as well as... Um, 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 uh, B, did you, were you gonna um, respond on that one? I can see your uh, smile. No, I, I just um, feel that statement um, might be not so uh, accurate, but there you go. Um, whether it is really a gender e 
equal society. Uh, well, it, I think many people will tell you no, if you are a woman. Um, yeah, I mean, let me, let me kind of um, uh, follow up. I mean, I think that is one of the really interesting things about discussing uh, this issue. I mean, in other words, how do we actually measure gender equality? Um, um, the Taiwan government will always tell us um, in their public diplomacy uh, how gender equal Taiwan uh, is. And, and it's one of the ways that Taiwan tries to brand itself. But I think if we, um, and this actually came out in one of my classes this morning, um, if we look at these issues from other angles, for example, if we look at it from um, marriage migration, we, um, and we look at some of these issues from uh, a family angle, we can see a, a continuation of a lot of patriarchal practices. Um, so that, that's, I think, why um, it's quite interesting when we kind of combine some of these modules on Taiwan. Um, in other words, uh, if we just take the kind of international relations, we miss um, so much in, in the way that Taiwan society um, uh, operates. But I think that it's, it's, it's a great question because there's so many kind of angles we can, um, uh, we can, uh, we can look at. Um, okay, we have a, another question. Um, um, yeah, um, um, uh, for um, Rohitha's uh, question, um, there's two separate uh, modules. So there's the um, election, social movements, and gender in Taiwan. So that module is purely looking at Taiwan using comparative politics frameworks, while the comparing democracies in Northeast Asia uh, is a purely comparative uh, module. So in other words, with the comparing democracies module, every week we look at the three countries together, but on a different theme. Uh, so for example, uh, today and yesterday, we were looking at the three countries from the angle of migration. So for example, uh, looking at why do we see similar patterns of marriage and labor migration in these three cases? To what extent are the um, uh, claims to be multicultural society really uh, persuasive? To what extent is the understanding of multiculturalism different in Northeast Asia compared to uh, European countries? Um, so uh, the answer to your question is the comparing democracies is purely comparative. It's, it's, uh, you have to look at um, uh, the, the, the cases comparatively. For the Taiwan one, it's more using comparative politics, frameworks and theories to look at Taiwan. We probably have about two minutes left um, of the session before we'll have to wrap up. So if anybody has any more questions, do feel free to pop them in the chat. And you can always um, follow up and ask us questions by um, uh, by email. Um, and also just keep an eye as I think Max has, has put the um, Senna's events uh, page there. Um, so just feel free to kind of um, um, uh, follow up with us. If there's anything that we kind of missed or if any qu kind of questions come to your mind after the, uh, the session. Absolutely. I think that might be us. Um, you can also pop your, um, I can pop my email in the chat and if anybody has any questions then feel free to send them to me and I can make sure that they get to the relevant person in the department um, as well. Or perhaps if you just have questions about applying to SOAS and what that looks like in terms of the application form, then we're also really happy to um, help you with those as well. I'll put my uh, email in there as well. And I suppose we, uh, we should say we look forward to um, seeing your applications and hopefully seeing you at, um, um, at, at SOAS. I think um, uh, Max, myself and Adela would probably say coming to SOAS was probably one of the best decisions of our, uh, our lives. All righty, I will um, end the session, but thank you everybody for joining us and please don't hesitate to follow up if we can help with anything, but take care and thanks for joining us.